Hey, Viper Keeper here at Zoo Atlanta. Come on inside and uh, let's uh, go see what uh, they have uh, behind the glass and behind the scenes. Uh, here's your uh, friendly neighborhood eyelash vipers. Uh, Zoo Atlanta uh, Herpetology Department has uh, seriously changed things around since I was last here. Uh, adding a number of very nice amphibian exhibits and uh, changing up uh, a number of the venomous exhibits. Here's the other side of the uh, black mamba exhibit and that's uh, the portal for the uh, shift box and this is the character that they're uh, shifting. Um, my guesstimates, that's uh, about a 10-foot black mamba. Uh, as you can see, it's very robust uh, body size. Uh, simply uh, a very tricky customer to work with. Now, David did mention that this guy uh, will uh, come up and try to visit with you when they're on top of the cage fixing a light or changing a light. Uh, he's been here for a long, long time. He used to have a, a different arrangement. Uh, very bad customer. Well, there's a mottled rock rattlesnake under there. And there's a black tail in the back underneath that uh, uh, agave. Um, look at their vivariums. Um, uh, these are our cream of the crop vivariums uh, at a zoological park. Uh, look at it, it's just perfect. Uh, gray habitat for the animal, very pleasing to the visitor's eye. Uh, hats off to the guys here. This one's a, a very, very cool one uh, because it has a couple of very interesting species which you don't often see. Bothriaches orifer, which has been one of my personal favorites. Uh, in the back there, a little tough to see, you have an Lachesis muda, a bushmaster. And in the back there, in the tree, you have a Bothriaceus lateralis. So this is a, a multiple species uh, uh, enclosure. Very, again, just perfect uh, habitat. It takes a lot of man hours to upkeep uh, vivariums like this. It is just stunning. Oh, look, it goes right over into a, the other habitat. And who else do we have in here? Uh, Bothriatus bicolor in here. Wow, beautiful. Ah, a friendly neighborhood mangrove snake, uh, a commonly kept uh, rear fang uh, with some very, very nasty metalloproteases. So if you get bit, uh, you might find yourself uh, a bit necrotic. Here's a good old friend, the Nyapolides from Africa, the, the pallid red spitter. Hi, guy. How you doing? Now notice the, uh, the enlarged venom glands on spitters because they have to have a large supply in order to uh, have enough to uh, act as a fire hose. Here's the, the parents of those young uh, Kistrodon bilineatus that we saw in back. And again, I mean, look at the vivarium. These guys really, really 
top-notch uh, enclosures. Oh. Who do we have here? Huh? <laughs> Rhino vipers just don't like to be caught in motion, right? Hmm? Is that true? I know. She's giving me the hairy eyeball. You gonna get a drink of water? Oh, I saw you twitch, huh? You gonna bob your head for me? Are you, huh? You're thinking about it. No? Right now, the people around me think I'm totally insane, but that's okay. The rhino knows what I'm saying, huh? Oh, that's okay. Um, that's a African rhino viper, and uh, it's called a rhino viper because it's got horns on the end of its nose. It's a semi-aquatic snake. It lives in swampy Central Africa. Uh, eats anything that uh, crosses its path. And rhino vipers is one of my specialities, so um, sometimes I can get them to uh, uh, bob heads with me, so that's what I'm sort of doing to see if I can elicit a response. So far, she she hasn't been interested they in that. Furry. Yeah. Uh, their scales are very, very rough, uh, not smooth like that one. Uh, actually, when I've been pinning them down and treating them for parasites when they first come in from Africa, uh, the scales are so rough that I'll actually scratch and scrape my arm. Uh, they're really, really, uh, uh, it's, it's like 60 grit sandpaper. It's really coarse. Are you getting cranky, honey? Huh? Yeah, I am. All right, I'll leave you alone. Here's a very rare Philippine palm viper. This is uh, Trimasurus McGregori. Uh, don't often see that. Also, you don't often see them laying with their head to the side. I hope he's uh, okay. Here's a Picado's uh, jumping viper from Central America. Looks a bit opaque. <laughs> now look at this uh, East African gaboon. It's got uh, a serious uh, uh, set of um, eye protruding from the sockets, and normally uh, I don't stick out so much. And actually, David told me the story behind this guy is. He, this female got whacked by the male uh, over in the corner and actually lost an eye. Uh, see, so I'm not the only one that has, uh, has issues and problems like that. Okay, huh? These are uh, the, the large uh, adders from Africa that have the largest fangs of any of the venomous snakes. Um, well, that one's not not. This particular species of gaboon doesn't get much more than probably f four feet, but the West Africans are much larger, and they can have like two-inch fangs. This one's probably got a good, uh, probably inch and a half fang, or or fat. somewhere over yeah, over why an inch. Yeah, they such fat and short? Well, because they're ambush predators. Uh -oh. Um, they just sit and they blend into the background, and an animal comes by, and boom, they grab it. They really do blend in good. Yeah, I, you know, they're... I didn't even see that one. Just uh, they're sort of like couch potatoes, you know? Uh, just like us that sit around on the couch all the time. Uh, we put on the weight, well... Jump in the refrigerator for food. Yeah, that's, that's exactly it. Now, so. would she be able to live, like, in the wild with just one eye? Uh, yeah, her strikes may not be as accurate as they would be because they do have very good stereo vision and stuff, but she'd probably be okay in the wild. And there's Miss Mamba. I guess she visited the shift box. She's got a pretty long head on her. So 
this is a shift box for their large black mamba, which I'll show you uh, some images of lately of later. Uh, very elaborate system. Uh, do you have any trouble getting that girl in here, um. or do you have uh, sort of a uh, an enhanced uh, sort of a, a procedure that would entice her to come in? Uh, it's basically just uh, set it up and wait. Oh, kind of deal, uh, and you know most. Snakes will seek out a dark and closed place, so we just keep the cover on and just uh, wait for them to come in. Yeah, and then you shut the valve and shut the valve, lock him in there, and we can go in and do whatever we need to. Uh, so, is this the only access door for the cage? So you have to slide this out of the way yeah. in order to gain access. Yeah, once he's in there, we lock him in, disconnect the <laughs> the whole contraption, and roll it back, and. And we're able to get in I, I also see that you've got bricks to make sure that it doesn't roll away from the wall. Yeah, um, yeah we don't want it to just haphazardly roll away. Of course, we have a, it's bolted in. Uh -huh. so it can't really come out, but it's just an extra precaution to have well, the bricks. Well, uh, absolutely. <laughs> bricks are cheap. Uh, hospital yeah. visits are yeah. not. And, uh, uh, this box has a couple of uh, really neat features. Uh, of course, you can see it has the plugs on either side to attach tubes to if we need to tube the snake. Oh, ah, okay. Well, I uh, thought, you know, it was like a glove box that you could stick your hands in. No, uh, no. no, like no. Um, the, the lid, we can take these four bolts out, press the lid down if we need to administer any medication. Uh, okay, so it's also a squeeze box. Yeah, it's a squeeze box. Squeeze box down, and it's a squeeze box this way. There's a press button uh -huh. we can install, and that just helps us get him into a tube, you know, just make that space smaller so that he is... Okay, I also working. see that you can anesthetize the yeah, snake. Yeah, we can uh, anesthetize him in there. Uh, which probably makes all the vets very happy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, Absolutely. Uh, I mean, it's... That, that came about because um, this guy had a medical procedure about three years ago. Mm -hmm. And halfway through the procedure, he does this number on the table. <laughs> And one of the keepers who is not with us anymore, he's over at the Botanical Gardens. But uh, he was he was just uh, there, you know, he was on it. And as soon as the snake's head came up, he grabbed it and saved everybody. Because this, this particular mamba is, uh, like the cobra you were talking about, is just aggressive. Like if, you, if you're up on top of the cage doing something up there, he is up there trying to get you. You know, he's up there probing around, you know, hooding, showing his mouth. How do I get to this guy? Yeah, I, uh, I understand they're, you know, uh, and blacks are quite different from the other mambas in the family. Um, ultra, ultra intelligent. And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's no, no they're, they're not dumb snakes. They can certainly work out uh, how you're, you're working with them and, mm -hmm. and figure out the best way to get you if they want you. Yeah. All right, very cool uh, shift system, though, and... And certainly, you know, if you, if, you, if you need to, you know, knock the animal down to, to do a medical procedure, uh, it's the only way to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> dragging it out by its tail, a snake that size, um, yeah, that would cause me to wet my pants, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so again, guys, this is uh, behind the scenes, uh, behind the ex main exhibits out in the uh, Zoo Atlanta Reptile House. And, uh, oh, one thing we didn't hit on, uh, you have an alarm system for in case someone's uh, bitten? Yes, it's right over there above the seat. There's okay. an alarm, there's one in each section, so. Okay, yeah, I, I knew it had to be here because um, I think it's in the accreditation, AZA yeah, accreditation. Yeah, AZA requires alarm yeah. system. Yeah, alarm system. And, uh, uh, some more bearded lizards, different species. Uh, I won't, won't bother yeah, her. No, she's she's a little necessary. sick right now. But uh, I'll show you the, the older guy. You can kind of see him there. He's in his little hide. Uh, snoozing like beaded lizards are known yeah. to do. Well, this guy, part of the reason he's snoozing is because he is older than Methuselah. Oh. This guy has been in our collection for 40 years. Wow. So he is he's uh, quite possibly a longevity record. Holy this, cow. This is the Ureo Fuertes beaded lizard. Heliderma hardum exasperatum. 40 years? You're almost as old as I am, guy. <laughs> wow, that's very cool. I'm glad you've uh, had a nice long life, and these guys certainly take good care of you, obviously. Hopefully I have many more years with this. I'm hoping he'll, uh, he'll work with the 
girl up there and give us some eggs this year. Yeah, hi. <laughs> Want to do beaded lizard cam? <laughs> hey, it's beaded lizard cam. Talk about relaxed. Yeah. I move for no man. Ah, okay. <laughs> and these, these are this, our baby candles. Right, the ones that you mentioned mm -hmm. that were born and stuff. Uh, the Kistridon bilineatus. Uh, people don't realize how hot these little guys are. Yeah. Uh, they think, oh, it's just like a, a bite from a, a water moccasin. No. <laughs> you, you would be hard pressed to die from a water moccasin bite untreated. These guys uh, cause fatalities on a regular basis. Very, very hot little snakes. These are main, main sham mountain vipers. He's in the top of the little <laughs> plant there. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, now I noticed you've got them fairly warm, and I was always uh, told to, uh, oh, we're focusing on the screen. I can't okay, quite yeah. see them. All right. Well. Um, oh, there he is. Well, see, we have compact uh, fluorescent lights on, so it's not really putting out any heat. Oh, okay. Let's see. Oh yeah, minimal heat. Yeah, this is mainly just for light. Um, so so they're staying, you know, lower to mid 70s. And we only got them in here now because it's winter. As mm. soon as uh, it starts heating up outside, we'll move them to a cool room. We have a cool room that's air conditioned and everything. We'll keep them around 65 to 70 degrees. Yeah, M Mang uh, the Mang Shang male that I had, uh, uh, he would go psychotic if it got over 75 degrees. Yeah. He would just uh, just go nuts in the cage and as soon as you cooled him down uh, He would be a happy camper again. Yeah, uh, but uh, they really really don't like the heat Well, I see an old friend here yeah. there's, there's the male the females over here in another cage. Now nah, they've got some good size for yearlings that yeah. well Yeah, the 20th of March they're a year old uh, yeah, that's fantastic great. to see one of the little babies. Uh, um, yeah, I picked out a good pair for Brad. Uh, yeah. Um, these are uh, these are just good. And she is just about to shed. She was opaque last week. And now, what sort of feeding schedule do you got these guys on? Uh, right now, we're doing uh, uh, a fuzzy rat about every week to week and a half. Okay. Yeah, I've been, uh, I, I push mine a little bit because I want to get, get them up to breeding size a lot faster. Yeah. So I, I give them a, a fuzzy a week. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, fuzzy rat. Um, although the ones that I have will eat virtually anything I put in there, they do have a preference for rats. Yeah. Um, mine eat the uh, quail chicks. They eat uh, mice, they eat rats, um, I don't try anything else, but mm. I tried to vary their diets so they have, uh, you know, a reasonable diet. Uh, yeah. So they're getting different kinds of proteins from different sources. Now, you're keeping these guys on the cool side, like I, I specified. Mm. Again, uh, interestingly enough, I've got uh, I've got a pair that I put on loan to a friend in Florida for a while, and his uh, uh, he sent the animals back up to me, and because they were in Florida, they actually will heat will sit in the hot spot and they won't go to the cooler spots. Really, they're the only only two, and you know I, I realize with the babies you can pretty much set them up as you like, mm -hmm. but. Uh, the adults, um, I don't let them get much warmer than 75 degrees, and you can see that they're getting edgy and uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Basically, yeah. you have to you have to keep them like with a mangshan, cool mm -hmm. and on the moist oh. side. Hey, I'd like to thank you, David, for uh, spending some time with hey, me today and showing me behind no the problem. scenes here at uh, Zoo Atlanta. And uh, um, you know, I'll. Uh, I'll be in touch and I'll uh, be sure to stop in next time I'm oh, yeah, in definitely. town. Yeah, anytime, just uh, let us know.